Welcome back everyone to our method two video for partial fraction decomposition about comparing coefficients. We have already explored our method one, which is setting factors equal to zero. That's something that is a short method and you can use it a lot, but you can't use it on every problem. And so we wanna make sure we're familiar with the comparing coefficients method. Here I've set up three X squared plus three X minus eight over X plus three times the quantity X squared plus one. Looking at our denominator that's already factored, I know I'm going to have something over x plus 3, and I'm going to have something over x squared plus 1. Okay, since this is a linear factor, just have an x as our highest power, we will need a constant only. Because we have a quadratic factor, x squared, I need all powers below x squared, which means I need an x term and I need a constant in my numerator. We are going to just do a little bit of less writing here and think about what would the numerators look like once we get a common denominator. So obviously the beginning fraction itself that we started with already has the common denominator. It has all of the factors in the denominator to begin with. So this is not going to change at all when we get a common denominator. We'll have 3x squared plus 3x minus 8. What we would do to the a fraction is we would multiply in the x squared plus one factor to the top and the bottom. So the numerator for this one would look like a times the quantity x squared plus one, and then bx plus c, which is more than one term. So I want to make sure that I put it in parentheses. What would we multiply the top and bottom here by to get the common denominator? We would multiply the x plus three into this fraction. So this is what the numerators would look like once we got a common denominator. And remember, we will be solving the numerators anyway to find a, b, c, etc. So I'm not going to write all of the denominators and then write it again. Hopefully you're okay with this being what we would get from the common denominator process. Um, from our method one video, remember that was setting factors equal to zero. So if you look through here and you think about what could I set uh, x equal to to make a factor 0, you might notice on the end here that we could set x equal to negative 3. That would make that factor 0 and some stuff would disappear here and help us solve. The other factor that we have is x squared plus 1. And the problem becomes, how do I plug in something for x so that x squared plus 1 equals 0? And the answer is there's no real number that will work for that. And that happens very often. When we have x squared plus some number, we're going to get some imaginary solution for x, and we're not going to plug in imaginary values, complex numbers. We need to be plugging in real numbers. So we'll go ahead and at least use our x equals negative 3, but we're not going to be able to set all of the factors equal to 0. So if we go ahead and plug that in, that will give us negative 3 squared would be 9 times 3, so this first term will be 27. Th negative 3 times the 3 that's already there would be minus 9, and then we have minus 8. Plugging in negative 3 squared would be 9, plus 1 would give us 10 in this factor next to a, and then of course plugging in negative 3 makes this 0, which makes this whole entire thing 0 here because it's all multiplied together. Okay, so for this one I get 27 minus 9 minus 8, which ends up actually being 10, and that's equal to 10a, so that's easy to solve. Divide both sides by 10, and we get that a is equal to 1. Now, we still don't have b and c, and we aren't able to set this factor equal to 0. So what we will need to do is we will actually need to take this stuff that we have, we're trying to solve from, and we need to distribute and then we will do as the title of the video says, we will compare the coefficients. So there's nothing to distribute on the left side. We have 3x squared plus 3x minus 8. And then if I distribute a in here, I get ax squared plus a. If I distribute these, so bx times x will give me bx squared bx times 3 will give me 3bx, c times x will give me cx, and 3 times c will give us 3c. What we will now do is combine all of our like terms. So I have 3x squared plus 3x minus 8 
And then over here, if I think about what do I have as far as like terms, here's an x squared term and there's an x squared term. So how many x squareds do I have? Well, I have a plus b, because that's what those terms are. I have ax squareds plus bx squareds, so I have a plus b x squareds. Uh, then we go through and look at x terms, so I have a 3bx and a cx there. So how many x's do I have? Well, I have 3b of them in the one term. And I have c of them in that term. So I have 3b plus c x's. Looking at the constants, I have an a and I have a 3c, and those are my constants. So I'll just put those together, a plus 3c. Okay, what we will now do is compare coefficients. In other words, I need to have the same amount of each respective power on both sides. So if I look at my x squared term, so I have three x squareds over here, the x square coefficient over here is a plus b. So that tells me right there that a plus b is equal to three. If I look at how many x terms I have on both sides, I have three of them here, I have 3b plus c of them there, so I have 3b plus c equal to 3. Looking at the constant terms, here I have a negative 8, and here I have a plus 3c, so those must be the same. So in other words, a plus 3c must be equal to negative 8. Now I have a system of equations, and this might be a little bit challenging to solve and lengthy because I have three things I'm trying to solve, but I have already found one of them. I already know that a is 1 from up here. So if I already know this is 1, then this tells me that 1 plus b is 3. And so right away I can solve that for b, right? If I subtract 1 from both sides, then that will give me that b is 2. Um, I could go ahead and use either of these now. I already know a and I already know b, so let's just say I go with the next one. If I know that b is 2, then this next 3b plus c becomes 3 times 2, which would be 6 plus c is equal to 3. And then if I subtract 6 on both sides, I would get that c is negative 3. So now we've solved all our stuff. You could use the last one if you want. You may not have to use all of these. Once you know one, you can just kind of pick and choose, you know, which equation out of these is the shortest to get the next letter that I want to get, right? So we have our a, we have our b, and we have our c. So now we'll simply plug those into this form that we set up to begin with. So our partial fraction decomposition will be 1 over x plus 3 plus b is 2, and that's our x coefficient, so that's 2x. c is negative 3, so that goes up there. bx plus c is 2x minus 3 over our factor x squared plus 1. Okay, so comparing coefficients. That's kind of a backup if you're unable to use all of the factors and set all the factors equal to zero. Maybe you have some repeated factors where you just can't get all of your a's, b's, and c's solved directly. So this is the method that you will use uh, to solve if you get stuck and aren't able to set all of your factors equal to zero and get those straight away. All right, hopefully this helps you on comparing coefficients and partial fractions. We'll see you in some of our example videos.